So you're reading the literature on packet brokers and you see all this discussion around different types of ports, network ports, tool ports, bidirectional ports. Aren't all ports bidirectional? And then you got different types of port groups. So my name is Hans Hohenner. I'm a systems engineer at Keysight. And today we'll walk through all those details. So let's talk about ports, port modes, and um, what, how they relate on a packet broker. So the ports are any physical port that's within a packet broker. And within the screen here, you can see I've got all of them listed. A port mode is just the responsibility or the role or the mode that I assign to that port. If I look at port one here, you can see the different types of port modes listed. So that's network, tool, bidirectional, loop pack, simplex ports. Uh, you know, all of these can be assigned to any port on the packet broker. The first port type or mode to talk about is network port. And so they're always listed on the left here in the packet broker. And uh, that's all data coming into the packet broker. That data source could be a tap, a span, some other packet broker that's feeding data from maybe a remote site, what have you. But just know that a network port is all data coming into the packet broker. A tool port, and I've got four of them already assigned over here, four ports assigned as a tool port, is just data going out of the packet broker to whatever analysis tools you have within your network. These could be uh, things like DLPs, NTAs, uh, or even could be something simple like a Wireshark server. You've got it set up to just capture packets off of your network for operational reasons. So now let's talk about loopback ports. Loopback ports allow me to take data in through the packet broker, loop it through a port, and then it'll come right back out that same port, hence the term loopback, um, so that I can then pass that data through the packet broker a second time. When I turn a data port into a loopback port, just like a bidirectional port, I've got a uh, network port assignment as well as it's also shown up on a tool port side. So I can do things like these two taps. Maybe I want to send that data off to this other packet broker like we previously talked about, as well as send it uh, to a different port and filter it further before I get it to another tool. So then I can just take that data, feed it down into the loopback port. That data comes right back out this port five and now I send it to some other tool and I can do additional filtering at filter three here. Finally, let's talk about simplex ports. Simplex ports take advantage of an LC's feature that it's got one transmit fiber and one receive fiber. This allows you to take those two connections and logically break them in half so that you can use a single transceiver for both a network port and a tool port within a packer broker. You would have the uh, data on or the receive port on the on the transceiver, come in from the tap and get connected, and then you would connect the transmit on that receiver with a different fiber strand out to the tool uh, and use one transceiver for both functions. If you look inside the GUI on doing this, I'll take port six here and convert it to a simplex port. And now you can see I've got two port sixes, you know, this port six and this port six with the underscore T for transmit and I can take and actually connect that to each other and feed it through another filter. So now I've got port six coming through, I'm filtering the traffic and I'm sending it right back out the same transceiver, just out the transmit light on that transceiver towards the tool. So I hope that explains the different types of ports that you can use within a packet broker. If you've got any other questions, please hit us at the email address up here, join the journey at keysight.com and look forward to talking to you. Take care.